I think you are the same. All in banks are close to 7%. But mind you, the 7% of the market share has been achieved with 0.5% of the share of the network. That's a difference. That 0.5% of the network, we have almost 73,000 or 74,000 of bank branches in the country, of which only 0.5% have been represented by the foreign banks. This is a structure. Now I have shown you. And if you remember, that is, we are used to be by Visa Bank. Now, effective July 2007, minimum below which we cannot go. Now, that issue, I just showed the frame to you to understand that when it comes to the mobilization of capital, it's going to be a big issue of the bank. You are almost to feel the same that big, which is a pressure point. Beyond that, government of India, in terms of the existing act, they cannot dilute less than 50 of the city. But we could take IOP, General Bank, UCO Bank, CBI, Indian Bank, the capital for this program. You have seen foreign banks. I just like to tell you, 2005, McKinsey made a white paper on banking, Indian banking, 2010. At that time, they walked out to sustain the growth the way they are growing. will be requiring 600 billion rupees after 2010. Or if you consider the income of dollars, they are talking of 14 billion dollars in poor for the growth of the bank the way they are going. Now the whole idea of showing it to you is if you have already reached 50 percent of your holding beyond which government cannot value one of the capital accounts. I just plan the issue with you, come back later, which is going to be one of the great challenges for the commercial bank in the country to manage the capital in the district of now, assets quality. Today we could say the Indian banking industry is almost at par with the international standard. We have already adopted international norms three years back, and I do remember 192 Bank of India. Average gross NP or non-performing assets or non-performing law was 20. That progressively is coming down, all sort of commercial bank 0.58 percent. But this is essentially the function of how much of provision you are holding. Move the losses to the healthy side. I should say that in terms of asset quality, in terms of the income recognition and asset quality norms, you could say Indian banking industry is at par in this global term. As of today, you have two parameters. One parameter you do in terms of external parameters and regulatory parameter, you have to be able maintain 9% of the capital. But if you look at the group ones, that state bank group has 12.5%, national bank 12.5%, private sector bank 12.5%, foreign bank 12%, is a very, very healthy thing. Now the question is that when 9% is a capital adequacy, why you need to maintain it as high capital as you see of 12.3%. This is essentially for your growth, essentially to manage your capital at a price which is economical for you. That's what we At the same time, internationally, you are supposed to make a benchmark for economic capital. Economic capital is always higher than the regulatory capital. If the regulatory capital is 9% as it is today, even at the Basel II dispensation and come and issue the Basel II later, they also, you know, 12.28 percent, if you can keep and maintain, say, 11.5 to 12 percent, that's going to be a very good portion. If you want to see and make more yourself globally in terms of economic capital. The foreign banks record is not even over here. This is the bank's record at a glance, inclusive of, inclusive of, you know, you know both the generation, you know, private sector, all that generation. Now, I want to look at the coverage. Demographically, rural and city are almost constitute 60% of the bank's network. Where the next activity is going to be next five years. We are talking of 
we are talking of financial and that can be very very effectively challenged to the logistics you have already created by 63% of your branch network in the rural and semi urban areas. And that rural sector, we are not really, really revived or exploited to the extent it would have. Okay. The number of startups done. We have a look at it that National Bank has a reduction of 0.79%, State Bank Group by 5.32%, other public sector bank 65%. This other public sector bank column, there is a massive growth of 65% This essentially represents IDBI bank. Because IDBI bank just started and the growth will be there. If you are looking at total PSB public sector bank, the growth has been a negative growth in terms of the staff population. It's a good sign because there is a cost and if you are making cost effective, you have to manage the operational cost and a major part of operating cost of the Indian banking is the start cost. Okay. So gradual improvement on the segments, state bank group, national bank, other public sector bank, and all banks inclusive foreign banks. Now, just have a look at it. The inclusive foreign banks, our employee productivity was 5.22 crores. But if you compare other public sector banks, private banks, they are 6.98, which is higher than the you know, industry average. If you take state bank growth, against 5.22 to 4.36, there's enough scope for it. Thirdly, coming nationalized bank, against 5.22 to 4.90 per capita. Now, necessary it is deposit advances put together. We don't take other assets, which is investment assets, we normally don't take when determining the footage of balance sheet. So, what we are looking at here is a sum total of the business deposit adverses put together and simply divided by the number of employees operating and working as a given date of the balance sheet. And there is huge linkages and interdependence between the economy and the growth of the banking because banking, particularly the low, the credit which you give to the market, they are the driver of GDP. And if you look at it, when the GDP is going up, all banks are doing quite well because the GDP is driven by the growth of the credit portfolio of the banking industry. Of course, there are other sources where this can be funded for the bank is a major tremendous amount of shift. Now, if we look at 7071, I want you to have a critical look at services, it has run from 13 to 63 percent. And 0708 and 0809, though we are looking at a state of deceleration, but I, I personally feel that we will be able to make it anything between 78 to 8 percent of GDP growth. And with the same contribution of the individual constituting elements, as you saw here, a great industrial services, and major impasses, he is going to be on the services, how the service sector is doing. If the service sector is doing well, then I, I, I would agree that it is possible to have a 8 percent growth in the present fiscal zero zero value. Now, this is very critical. This is where the you are being, and we have been consistently have been hired by the global benchmark. 39% of which household is a major contributor. Household is not look, 0607 is 23%. I have from the work, but the data so far, functional data, I think functional data is going to be same range, almost 21% for the fiscal zero for the also. Now, this is a growth rate I have talked about. You know, all of you know that the Trish, the Hindu rate of growth, 3.3%. Then we came back, 6% in 1881, This is the year post reform, because reform really started in 1992. And 06 07, we did 9.6%. And 07 08% at 9%. I am hopeful, I am hopeful that through RPI, even Professor Ramarajan, who is the chairman of the advice and council of the Prime Minister, saying that it is possible to come close to 8 percent. But I think the way the first quarter has shown, we can maintain the momentum of the first quarter. I think 8 percent growth is possible in this fiscal also. If not 8 percent, it will be close to 8 percent. You know, don't see in the context or in the backdrop of 
eight point six nine. We are pushing global position to the macro. US is talking about GDP of two point four percent. Eurozone is Eurozone is looking at a GDP of again two point two point three two point four percent. If you set aside China, we are still the second best number. If you independently look at it. And for me, for the time being, the last two years was going to be major growth, 9.6, 9%, 8.6%. Last five years average is a tremendous amount of achievement. But so, conclusion: What are their quality dimension? That's why I show you ROA, staff productivity, staff. Okay. Another quality dimension I showed to you was that quality of assets. Which is very, very, very important. Okay. Now, we are going into the evolution banking industry in the country. You know, I just like to quickly to the Rama that you can divide banking industry in three major phases. One, from 1900 to 1969. Why have bracket in 1969? Because that's the first phase of reform took place when the nationalisation took place. Now. 1969 to 1991, while the expansion program was there, socio-economic came in very sharp focus because all directed lending got put at in that point of time. And the last phase was 1991. Now, each phase is characterized by its own macro environment at a particular time, structure of the banking. If you look at 1990, that is the prior prior to the nationalisation, we have not very aggressive bank ownership has been resting in the almost private all 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 private houses have their own bank. 69 to 90, expansion took place, direct lending took place, some sort of you know adoption of technology took place, but what really actually happened? 99. Is amazing. Believe me, 1992, I can never believe that state and group will be able to go for network plan. We were talking of that for the time, almost 12,000 branches across the country. Apart from apart from huge costs, there is no availability of logistic support to meet your service. And what are the two major changes that took place? There are there are one interplay of you know policy decision taken by the policy makers. When I talk of policy makers, I refer to the Bank of India, the Bank of India, the Ministry of Finance, and the management of finance. It is a function of coordinated action on the part of the policy makers and the individual managers. Policy makers make the market. Conducive for growth, creative infrastructure. At the same time, when we talk about infrastructure, I'll come to it later. This phase, 92 to 2000, this phase will be characterized by two major and significant developments. One, arrival of the new sector, public sector, ICICI, ACFC, Access Bank, ES Bank. They came to adopt the new culture. They came with a new business model. They came with new processes. Till like to two, we are doing. We are like to two. You know, we are doing the data entry operator. You know, used to call in you know, a machine, but it was computerized. But it was essentially in a sophisticated calculating machine, which we used to use. Second, they came with the technology. And mind you, if you have a look at it, that. Gradual sophistication of the technology came and application came, essentially because telephony also parallelly developed in that point of time. This was a major breakthrough in Indian good story that if the banking has done well, if the financial services has done well, that is amply supported by technology, amply supported by logistic support of telephony. Without telephony, you cannot think of. You know, I do remember, you know, I was. That point of time, you know, 99, 2000, State Bank of Patiala was the first bank in the public sector bank in the country to have 100% computerized, 
Hundred percent computerized mean again standalone distributed. Same kind of particular, we had forty-two branches in 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 you know, Madhya Pradesh, where average due to other power was two to three hours per day. And if your monitor does not work, if your printer does not work, if your server does not work. It will take seven days for the vendor to reach the branch to repair. Those are the those are the you know you know situation you have seen which was not at all conducive for adoption. In my was not conducive for adoption of technology. Today things are dramatically changed. There are areas we are not able to still penetrate by DSL network, but with a visa, visa and visa was introduced. It makes things very, very comfortable. Makes things very efficient. Today, you know, when I go to my hometown, you know, it's Bengal. I drop from my account in Hyderabad by ATM. It takes straight fifteen seconds. So this management you need to know 
what is your risk appetite, how far you go, and do the business with you. And again, post 2000, this risk management has been gradually refined and articulated by the research. And what we saw, the introduction of Basel was. Okay. Now, in terms of Basel was, again, we became globally benchmark. And we have been able to migrate from Basel 1 to Basel 2 by 31st of 2008. Of course, it is accessible for a number of banks. Banks which have global presence, they are required to do Basel 2 compliance by 2000, March 8. Even if bank has to do by March 2009. But state that group, not to say the fact that associate bank don't have overseas operation, but as a group, they have been Basel 2 compliant by March 2008. Now, what is Basel 2 is talking about? What is Basel 1 is talking about? Basel 1 and Basel 2 is not, 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 no, only the capital of the course. It is essentially the risk management, identification of the risk, monitor the risk, manage the risk, and what is the risk. Now, you need to provide this capital. Your risk management lacks weak, you need to make larger allocation towards the capital, 